This is an eGPU, also known as an external graphics processing unit. Inside it can house a full-size desktop class graphics card, and it connects to your Thunderbolt enabled computer through the use of a cable. For Thunderbolt 3 laptops, it's this cable. For Thunderbolt 2 laptops, it's this adapter and this cable. eGPUs are especially popular with Mac users as they allow the use of a more powerful graphics card than the one that's already in their laptop. So now you know what an eGPU is. Should you get one? Absolutely. Okay, well, maybe not exactly absolutely, but yes, absolutely you should. <laughs> and here's why. Basically, it sort of depends on what kind of user you are. If you are somebody who uses a MacBook Pro for their work and for everything that they do, I would highly, highly suggest getting an eGPU. They're not too expensive, along with cheaper graphics cards thanks to mining that are available. You can really save a pretty decent amount of money and actually add on a decent amount of performance. Obviously, it's not going to be the same performance gain you would get if you plugged it into a desktop class computer, but you're using a MacBook Pro, so there's no possible way for you to upgrade the graphics cards unless you do it externally. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not perfect. It's pretty expensive to just have the opportunity to put in a graphics card. But to be fair, if you've already spent about a thousand bucks on a MacBook Pro, it's not really the biggest cost, I would say, because RX 480s and 580s, which is the graphics cards I would suggest using, but I'll go over that list a little bit later, they only cost roughly a hundred dollars. And then to buy the actual eGPU is anywhere from between $200 and $300. And a lot of these newer eGPUs actually add a lot of functionality that you wouldn't be able to get unless you had something like an eGPU plugged into your MacBook Pro. Obviously, eGPUs aren't for everybody, though. If you are a Windows user, I'm going to have a tough time totally suggesting it. Although with the newest CPUs that have come out from Intel and Ryzen on the laptop mobile side, mainly Intel, you can actually get really, really good performance that you would be getting if you were to use a slightly older CPU. So it actually makes sense for a lot of people who already have a powerful laptop. Now, if you are trying to decide between getting a desktop and getting a laptop with an eGPU, it will 100 out of 100 times always be cheaper to just buy a desktop. That's just how it is, whether it's an iMac or whether it's a custom built PC. But you are somebody who was at this video because you're interested in an eGPU and you're interested in turning your laptop into something that can actually be usable for the future and not just be stuck out the components that are in it right now. So what are the biggest benefits of an eGPU? I would say the for me, the biggest benefit of an eGPU is the fact that I can keep a sort of minimalist setup. I'm using that buzzword because hopefully this comes up with all those minimalist videos that do really well. So minimalist, 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 minimalist. But seriously, adding an eGPU can really help minimize your setup and minimize the amount of things you have to deal with. Being able to plug in just a single cable into your MacBook or any other laptop with a, with a Thunderbolt enabled port is really, really useful, especially with the fact that this sort of thing has gotten a lot more useful in the past couple of years. And there's a huge eGPU community, it'll be linked down below, eGPU.io, where they can help you with like any problem that you have using your graphics card or your new eGPU. And I would say that for me, the biggest benefit is the minimalist setup. But the reason that's a benefit is because I can just get home, plug my laptop into the eGPU, it hooks up to my monitor automatically, and then you have the benefit of essentially a desktop class desktop, but you still have the mobility of a laptop. To be fair, the eGPU, you lose that power when you unplug it from the MacBook Pro or any other Windows laptop, but you also need to understand that if you had a desktop, you just couldn't bring that anywhere. So I would rather have some portability and not my full setup that I can bring everywhere, but still a pretty decent setup that I can bring most places, as opposed to having none of my setup that I can bring nowhere. To be fair though, eGPUs are by no means perfect. There are quite a decent amount of downsides with them, to be honest. The main one is that it costs money to have the opportunity to use a desktop class graphics card. If you just have a desktop PC, 
not an Apple PC, although the Mac Pros and then the newest Mac Pro, you can just slot in your own graphics card. But if you're using a MacBook Pro, you have to buy the eGPU just to have the opportunity to use the desktop graphics card, which is obviously frustrating because if you just had any old desktop PC, you would just plug it in and you would get the full performance of the card, which is another negative. You lose performance when you use an eGPU. The performance you gain using an eGPU is huge, but do keep in mind that you lose the performance of the graphics card. When using Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 1, you're going to lose about 30% of the performance of the graphics card if you're pumping it to an external display. But if you're pumping the eGPU back into your MacBook Pro's display, you're going to lose like 50% of the performance in some cases, which sucks. So you're buying a graphics card and then you're only getting a portion of that performance. Now, a portion of that performance is much better than what you had but it is a pretty severe degradation of performance as opposed to just plug it into a regular PCIe slot and then you're just good to go. You get the full performance of that card. You don't have to worry about anything like bandwidth limitations. But with an eGPU, you do have to think about that. But if you're willing to deal with the performance degradation, the sort of hokey tricks that you have to do in order to get your eGPU to work, you can actually get a pretty decent setup going for not a ton of money and then you also get the chance to upgrade in the future and i think that's one of my biggest things with these eGPUs, especially if you're a mac user you're pretty used to not being able to upgrade unless you sell the entire unit but with these eGPUs, you could slot in your own graphics card and then in a year or two when AMD releases the next graphics card, you could just pull the old one out, sell it, and then slot the new one in, which I think is really, really cool because on most Macs, you just have to buy the latest Mac in order to be able to do something like that. It's not perfect though, obviously, especially when using a Thunderbolt 2 MacBook Pro like I have sitting right there. The problem with Thunderbolt 2 is Thunderbolt 2 eGPUs and Mac OS is no longer officially supported. After they released 10.13.3, I believe, they sort of nuked performance of the eGPUs through Thunderbolt 2 for no reason other than the fact that they just don't like you. But there is a workaround and you actually have to just buy a few things from Apple. This cable right here is a Thunderbolt 3, if you could see that connector right there, if that would just... Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter, which allows you to then plug in a Thunderbolt 2 cable into the end of this adapter, and then plug the other end of that cable into your MacBook Pro. And then you can plug the USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 end into your eGPU. So it's definitely not perfect, but I am somebody who's a really, really big fan of eGPUs because it sort of sticks it in the face of Apple like, you're not gonna let me upgrade my graphics card? Well, I'm gonna do it myself. Or you're not gonna let me upgrade any part of my computer? I'm gonna do it myself. And you still get easy Mac OS integration and you don't have to deal with any funky drivers, especially if you use AMD graphics cards. So let's go over the list of what graphics cards I would suggest buying if you're using a Mac and if you're not using a Mac. So in an article posted, it says, NVIDIA, developers using Macs with NVIDIA graphics cards are reporting that after upgrading from 10.13 to 10.14 Mojave, they are experiencing rendering regressions and slow performance. Apple fully controls drivers for Mac OS. Unfortunately, NVIDIA currently cannot release a driver until it is approved by Apple. Basically what that means is that you cannot use an NVIDIA graphics card in your eGPU if you want to run it in a Mac. Although technically I believe you should be able to use it just fine in Windows if you were to run boot camp, but if you're spending all this money on a Mac, you should be using Mac OS. Just if you if you don't want to use Mac OS, just buy like a Razer Blade 15 or like a Dell XPS if you want that design. Which leads me to what graphics cards should you buy as an Apple MacBook Pro user as or as a non-Apple MacBook Pro user? If you don't use a MacBook Pro, get the best NVIDIA graphics card you can find. They're probably gonna be a little bit cheaper if you buy like a used, like a 1070 or 1070 Ti, but just know that every graphics card you buy, you don't get the full performance of it. So if you were to buy like a GTX 1080, you're probably gonna get performance similar to like a 1070 if it was just in a regular PCIe slot, as opposed to the 20 to 30% performance loss you're gonna expect when using a Thunderbolt 3 Windows laptop with an eGPU. Now, if you're a Mac user, it gets a little bit more interesting because you can't use NVIDIA chips. Obviously, that's what was stated, 
But if you do want an eGPU, there are actually a lot of really good and cheap options for you to use. What I would suggest personally is either an RX 480 or an RX 580, the 8 gigabyte versions. Both of those cards cost roughly a hundred bucks no matter where you look, whether it's eBay, Facebook, locally, Craigslist, it doesn't really matter. They cost about a hundred dollars. That's thanks to miners. So do understand that those cards have been mined on, which means that they've been used for an extended period of time. Not technically always full blast, but probably pretty high in terms of performance usage. But that's not necessarily the worst thing. It should be fine. Graphics cards are meant to be used, but do know that that's a potential failing point. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Worst case scenario is the fan will probably fail. And if that happens, you can always just jerry rig some little fan set up on top of that graphics card and you'll be fine. <laughs> and you're a Mac user, so you should expect a lot of heat from your products. If you want the best performance that money can buy in your Mac user, go with the AMD 5700 XT. But obviously that's a pretty expensive card and it's brand new. I su wouldn't suggest doing that as the performance gains aren't gonna be massive over like a Vega 64 or a Vega 56, which is probably what I would really suggest buying if you have a few hundred more dollars. And those Vega 64s and Vega 56 graphics cards should be had used for around 300 bucks. So that's sort of what I would go with if I, if I were you, a Mac user. Personally, what I'm using right now is an RX 480 and I've noticed some pretty decent performance gains with it. It's really nice being able to just plug in a single cable and have everything just sort of boot on. There are some eGPUs are nicer than others, but the one that I would really suggest getting is the Mantis Venus eGPU. It's super sharp looking. It adds some extra USB ports. So if you do just have this at your desktop, you just wanna plug in the one cable, you can plug in a single cable and then have all your USB dongles attached to the Mantis Venus along with an M.2 slot for extra storage. And that's gonna be pretty quick storage too because that's M.2 and it's an SSD and it's connected with a Thunderbolt 3 cable or a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. That's what I would really suggest doing. EGPUs are great. They have their negatives though, and they do have their downsides. So do understand that. And especially with these manufacturers like AMD and Intel coming out with these CPUs that are pretty cheap, that have performance that in some cases are better than like a 2014 and 2015 MacBook Pro. I would really suggest maybe looking at building a desktop if you strictly want it for gaming. But if you're using this eGPU for productivity based tasks like running multiple monitors to I don't know, to code, to edit a video, to day trade, stuff like that. I would really consider getting an eGPU. It adds a lot more power to your MacBook Pro and or your Windows computer, and it's not too expensive. You shouldn't spend more than three to $400, but do know that there are definitely some extra costs involved. And it's, it's fun. I love eGPUs. So I know I'm super biased regarding eGPUs, but I do still think it's something that everybody should just take a look at and try out because it's fun. Like I, being able to have a desktop setup and a mobile setup for me is awesome. And I know that for a lot of people that would be really nice too, because they need their laptop to edit photos on the go. But then when they get home, they need to add like the raw files or they just need to check the photos on the go. And then when they get home, they need to check their raw files. So it allows for a lot of expansion externally. And I'm a really big fan of that because most Mac products don't allow that. And most laptops don't allow too much expansion just due to the nature of the size of the laptop. So if you liked the video, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. I have noticed my last couple videos have done really, really bad, bad for my channel and just bad overall. So if this video when I post it doesn't do too well, I'll probably be taking a few days off to sort of let YouTube figure out exactly what's going on because I know that they're having a little bit of troubles with that. So I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm not sure when that'll be, but that'll be sometime. <laughs> All right, peace out.